And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone. Welcome to the Weighing In Podcast, where we just <laughs> witnessed UFC 307. I think it was 307. It was, was 307. 307. It was 308. 307. <laughs> Khalil Roundtree taking on the champion and Alex Pahea and Juliana Pena taking on champion Raquel Pennington in the co-main event. <sighs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! Had a baby, George. You know. Yep. Go ahead. Get that slobber off your face. It's all right. Don't worry about it. You weren't the only one that fell asleep. The entire crowd fell asleep. But then there was the main event. We'll talk about the whole thing. But how you doing there, brother? I'm doing good. I'm I'm dealing with this. Like I don't know. I don't feel bad. It's just my voice is gone. I just start talking yeah, I sound, deep because I sound like I'm a, a really bad guy now. Darth Vader. I'm a tougher guy. You know, like you have those like biker guys. I, I, I think I sound a little bit more like Don Fry. Really oh, there you yeah. go. See, there you go. <laughs> I, can't I, I can't even do Don. I can't even do it. I can't even do I can. I can, but I. <laughs> yeah, it was great. You, you were son of a bitch, man. They, they think yeah. they're fucking tough. They don't even know what tough is now. <laughs> I, can, I, I don't know if you were around. It was a fight. He was cornering some guy that like was a big Don Fry fan, <coughs> and the guy's like, "Man, I'd be so honored if you'd corner me." Da, da, da. The kid gets fucking mounted. He oh, I no, fucking... hold, hold on, that was in Strike Force. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. And it, okay, and that wasn't only just some guy. That was Cal Worsham's kid. Cal Worsham had oh, fought Jesus. in the USC, and, and and I was effing that fight. Jeez. And I swear to God. Josh, I'm listening to the fucking corner work, and I'm like, "Oh my god, this poor kid is so fucking bad." <laughs> I felt so bad. The kids, fucking I felt mounted. so bad for him too. Oh yeah, the kids mounted, yeah. getting fucking just pummeled, and just... Don Fry's yelling, "What, John? Knee bar, knee bar, knee bar, <laughs> knee bar. And we're just like, "What? The like, fuck? <laughs> like you talking about?" Me? Oh, Nibar! Nibar! We're like, oh, what? Nibar? He's fucking getting pummeled from the mouth. I felt so bad for the he kid. He could have gotten a knee bar if someone had jumped in the cage and helped him. Jeez, it was <laughs> it was bad. It was so bad. It was uh but you know what? I was just I felt Jeez. so bad for that kid. And it was Cal Worship's kid. He was kind of redheaded. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I, be I believe so. Like a ginger yeah. almost. Yep. Not He's quite a ginger, a strawberry blonde like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, Jeez, good kid. I, I felt so bad for the kid. There was that. And then on top of that, uh, he was actually in town training for some fight he was supposed to do over in Pride. Uh, Don Fry was. Uh, was it Pride? I think it, yeah, it was. Probably. Anyways, Pride, yeah, probably. Pride or K1 or something. Anyways, he was doing a fight in Japan. I swear, man. <laughs> he come in. It was 45 minutes of a warm-up. 20-minute workout. 45-minute <laughs> cool-down. <laughs> well, it, he had a he had a buddy that was always with. No him, reason to train longer him. than your fight. Yeah, right. I mean, he, it was it was crazy. Like he'd come in, we were like, "Wait, this is it? That's that's all." We thought like, okay, uh -huh. like you did your warm up. He'd come in early. We we're not even gonna take it like a true professional. He was here forty five minutes well, early. He did a forty five minute warm up, warm up. Twenty minutes of work. He's like, "All right, I'm good. I'm good." Not, yep, yep. I'm gonna have uh Ricky over here just you know stretch me and you know cool me down. <laughs> I cool you down, like <laughs> what the hell? We didn't even start the workout. That was warm up, dude. Like, I, we're... I'll tell you what though, that son of a bitch is one of the toughest men I've ever met. As far as <laughs> he is, just I mean he is, he's crusty and he's crude and he's just he's built out of something different. But he is tough, yeah, as hell. You know, no, he. There's no doubt. He got the most out of what he had. I mean, because he actually, you know, his stand up was good. His his hands were good. His wrestling was was pretty good. Yeah, you know. But man, I will tell you what, tough as hell. That dude had no quit in him. Where did he wrestle at? He wrestled at Arizona State. I, and, I thought so too. And OSU. Oh, he did. Yeah, he was at OSU when Couture was there for a little bit, I believe. Mm. So, I didn't know that. Long time ago. I knew, ago, he, was, I knew he was in Arizona State. <laughs> yeah. I he's didn't know post. he was in Arizona <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have John do a lot of this talking tonight because 
<laughs> and I'm sure it's most of you guys. Like Don Fry. I'm sure most of you guys are like, hell yeah, fucking drown <laughs> <No>. out <laughs> Josh's voice tonight. Uh, but hey, before we get started, John, I actually made some money this weekend. Uh, not on the fights. I bet on some college football. Oh. I just threw down a hundred bucks. Don't tell me you fun. bet on Vanderbilt. I did. You did I not. I did, John. At plus 1,000. I did. I bet a hundred bucks on Vanderbilt to cover the spread and, and to, uh, to win. I threw down, I threw down 50 bucks to cover the spread, 50 bucks to cover and to win. Fucking oh. cashed out, dude. That was, that was a What's nice cashed out. Like? <laughs> What's our profits? No, it was fucking so nice. So dude, nice. Dude, that, that game was at, at half, basically. It was like it was twenty three to fourteen. I want something say. like yeah. I think and it was. and then right away Alabama came out and said, "Yep, that's yeah. exactly what's going to happen. This game's going to be over." And then I looked and it was final forty to thirty five. I went, "Holy shit!" John, Alabama they, lost to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt tried every possible way to give the game away. <laughs> and luckily, their quarterback Pavia was able to come back and make plays happen. The receivers were making catches. The running back was was making runs. It was. They their offense was operating on all cylinders. Their defense could just for some reason thought, you know what? The game's getting close. Let's go ahead and give Alabama a chance to come back and beat us. <laughs> this guy catches the ball. I think his last name is Smith or Williams, one of the two. He catches number two. He catches the ball on the sideline. Uh, Literally that, all the guy that, had to do was that, push him out. That kid is but that kid He's is so, so good, good. John. So good. He's so good. Last week with a catch from Georgia. He had yep. like two or three catches last week from Georgia. And tiptoes out of the out of, he's you know, 17 years old. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's he's so good. Anyways, he did the same thing tonight. He um catches the ball. Basically, he's out of bounds. The guy, all the guy had to do was just keep pushing him a little bit. He didn't do that. Kid lands in bounds, tiptoes the sideline, past both defenders for a touchdown, like 60 yard touchdown. Yeah. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding. This is crazy. <laughs> and you're they thinking, were just, I can win a bet that is yeah, just absolutely epic, and you're going to do this to me. Well, John, if I, I didn't, I only bet on that game because I knew how tough they had the game before, and I know this in college. Sometimes they sometimes overlook the down. next game. Sure, you get yeah. Down. So Especially they beat when you Georgia. Think it's, a, it's an easier team. They beat Georgia the way they beat them, yeah. and then Vanderbilt coming in the next week, and Vanderbilt I think is like zero and sixty nine against number one people in the during season. Never had won. I was like, you know what? Let me just throw fifty bucks down. You know, to yeah, cover the spread. Because it was a plus it. 22 and a half on the I spread. I never would have thrown money on that. <clears throat> it was a plus never. 22 and a half. I'm like, 22 and a half? You just, you guys it got It was 23 and a half. Was it 23 and a half? At the end, half? 23 oh, and a half. I don't know when you did it, I, but at the end, and 23 and a half. 22 and a half. Yeah, they just, man, I'm like, da, 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 show me the money, <laughs> doing the money dance. It was, hey, but then, you know, I don't know if you know, but pretty much Tennessee lost. Uh, like all these top 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 teams, Arkansas ends up beating somebody as well. Arkansas beat Tennessee. Tennessee. Who are the other teams that that won? All the underdogs, all the underdogs today won. Uh, Missouri or Iowa won or lost. They were they were ranked as well. Jeez, man, insane. And I wonder who won the did Stanford beat someone. Stanford doesn't beat anybody. South Carolina. <laughs> I wonder if they won. I think it was South Stanford Carolina. Stanford for a yeah. while had a. Really good program going, and then it's kind of this gone. Yeah, it was Andrew Luck, though, when he had him there. Yeah, John yeah. Elway. Then it kind of skipped all the way to Andrew Luck, and then they were good again. That was it. No, they had, they had a couple. That's they had a time. couple of even passed there. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Cal, what though. Sucked, what's, what sucked was their mascot, the stupid tree thing. Yeah, like, I, well, come, I didn't the tree. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Cal. Cal was the same thing. Um, yeah. they, only, they were only good with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, pretty much. They had some good teams back in the day. Stanford but, lost. Oh, they lost. What did they lose by? Uh, thirty-one to seven, Virginia Tech. Jeez, Phew, yeah, that would be that a blowout. Vitor Belfort's son worked plays for Virginia Tech. Oh, does he? Davi, Davi Belfort plays for. Damn, it's a quarterback so... there. Really? Yeah. Nice. Phew. Athlete. 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 Wonder, wonder where he got from. Had to be the mom. Yeah. <laughs> Mom's a looker. That's for <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I was able to pull some money out of that bet us. I want to give them a shout out and say, thank you for that, man. That's my shout out to bet us. You guys, uh, use YouTube one fifty. YouTube one fifty at bet us is our promo code there. And they give you 150% bonus up to $2,000. If you use our promo code, YouTube one fifty. 
And then hey man, 125 let's jump. the next two. And then 125, 125% bonus on your next two deposits after that. So let's jump right into this because it's uh, two in the morning here. So Hello. Let's jump in the morning. So we can get this show out to you guys first thing. Um, let's jump right in the main event, man. Alex Pahea versus uh, Khalil Roundtree. Look, John, we give me the full we, breakdown. Come on. We expected it to be a good fight. And <clears throat> we, we said, look, Khalil, Khalil Roundtree just actually matches up pretty well against Alex. He's got power. We both picked Alex. We said, look, Alex should win the fight. It went farther than we thought. Boom. I'll give it that. We actually were saying, you know, it might not make it out of the second round. It yeah. definitely made it out of the second round. And I'll tell you what, Khalil Roundtree put on a hell of a performance, but he just systematically was getting broken down throughout the fight. Yeah. And he, he had a lot of, you know, big explosive rushes throughout it. And, you know, the one, like, it's like, the you know, they got all excited about when he throws the head kick up high mm -hmm. and, you know, Alex goes down on the one thing. It was more of a out of position, out of balance. But I'm not I'm not taking anything away from Khalil. I thought Khalil fought his ass off. And you could tell by the end, like that was a massive cut on his eye. Uh he took a beating in that last round and just tried to stay in it. And to the point you looked and you went, It's time to stop the fight. Mark Goddard did finally and uh you know, Poetan is still the man. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. it was a it was a very you know, when I look at it a very systematic and you know, they were talking, you know, his hands are down and things like that. That's the way he fights. Don't, don't expect him to stick his hands up high. That's not, that's yeah. not who he is. So it was a systematic and fundamentally, you know, well executed game plan of just breaking somebody down with power. And he did after a while, the guy's a stud, man. He is a monster at two Oh five. I don't know how he ever made one at five either. As I look at him, it's like, how the hell did you make a weight that's twenty pounds less? Yeah, he was so much bigger too. He looked way he's obviously way taller than uh Khalil. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, Khalil's obviously the thicker fighter, but man, he just had the reach, the height, all those things Everything. to his advantages. To his advantage. He's got the power. I'm just laughing because I'm going through some of these old comments, man. John, we did our three oh seven uh review. Yeah. And there was a bunch of people going, Man, I, I, you guys are you guys are such idiots. Can't believe you guys are are giving Khalil a chance. Like, stop with the bullshit. You guys are you guys are doing this. You got what do they call it? Gaslighting. We're, you oh, guys no. are gaslighting Wait, hold us. It. Hold it. Now we're shills for the UFC. Yeah. I, guess. Like okay, there you go. I, I literally like our comments were the reason why that fight was going to be so good was why because he's fast and he's explosive, and that will give Alex some problems or make. And him he a was more look. He was faster than Alex. There's yeah. no doubt. Oh yeah, absolutely. It wasn't just that, John. It wasn't just the fact that he was fast. It was that he actually made Alex respect his power. Yeah. And that explosive uh, small movements that he was making, the little little herky-jerky movements, that was making Alex hesitant to go ahead and commit to things. And when he did, he ended up getting hit with some shots. That's what got sat him down. He committed to the head kick. He committed to the big shot, to the big right hand, and left himself out of position. Every time he committed to a leg kick or a body kick, Khalil would catch the kick and then try to counter off that. He knew what he was doing. Oh, yeah. And um, it, it just came down to Alex just being patient. He had to be patient. He got a little careless in that second round, I believe. Yep. Got sat to his butt or That's got exactly you know wobbled it. a little bit. You know, it was more off balance, I think. You know, but he did take a big shot. But uh, it, it oh, just, he lost the round. Yeah, no for doubt sure about he it. did. No, he for sure yeah, he, he did. Look, he won the first round. At the end of two, it was even. He took the third round, and then obviously the fourth round is what it was. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go back to originally what I said the most would be the biggest problem was everyone was like, oh, well, he's been, he's dealt with left handers before. It takes away his biggest weapon, which is the left hook. Dealing it with also the takes away, it also takes away his, his low kick that he lives yeah, off of. Yeah. He still had, it was still effective. It just, what he doesn't use yeah, it but if often. It, it can't be the same power off of that no. lead leg. Just no, it can't. can't. It does. Yeah, it's not. But it just, I felt like it took away his key weapons. But then also, too, the hesitation of having to deal with Khalil's power, his explosiveness, and the way Khalil kind of comes straight in. You know what's funny is certain fighters, right, like Oscar De La Hoya, they have a left hook. Oh, but yeah. Their right hand is not what the left hook is. Yeah, it's you true. Know? And fighters that have a great right hand pretty much don't have a, don't, aren't that great with their left hook either. So, you know, maybe you're going to get fighters that can work both of them together. But when they have something like that, 
Like Ryan Garcia, beautiful left hook. He's got a beautiful left hook. Beautiful. Right hand, not he, anywhere near as good as the left hook. No. He's got, Oscar more power De La Hoya, he's got more power in his left hook than he has in his, his dominant hand. Oscar De La Hoya, beautiful left hook. Yep. Really even talks about, I mean, most people, like back then we were talking about, man, his right hand couldn't sit nobody down. He <laughs> didn't have a right hand, really. I, he, and everyone talked about it. He just used the right hand to kind of push you into his left hook. You know, and uh, we saw tonight, Alex, he, he has a hard time dealing with people that are southpaw. Um, sure. You know, like, oh, what about Yuri? What about, you know, we fought Izzy traditional. Yeah, but that's not Yuri is not a traditional Southpaw. He fights no. out of a South Southpaw stance at times. Yep. Khalil is a traditional. I am a Southpaw fighter and this is what, this is the way I'm going to be. Well, the difference is though. Switch. Yeah. The difference is though, too, is that one is very, uh, a lot better at defense than Yuri. Yuri's not good at defense. He's not no, a defensive he's fighter. He's a, no. I go forward, I do what I'm going to do. and I I'm take shots all- to give shots. Yeah, I'm going to utilize my athleticism to get myself out of the way of shots or roll with big shots. The other side of that would be uh, Izzy. When he fights, he switches stance. But Izzy's more of a traditional striker, kickboxer, and they know each other so well. So Alex kind of knows the way he moves and the way that he can work around him to try to set up his left hook. Um, but Yuri switch or Izzy switches quite a bit in terms of this tonight, man, it, this, this fight exceeded my expectations. It really, really? did. Absolutely. I really thought it was going to be a good fight. I, I honestly, I said, I think it's going to, it's a great fight. I can't believe people are, you know, saying he doesn't deserve it. He deserves it as much as when you look at the two Oh five division right now, it's like, there's not all this, you know, wow. This guy really is, you know, you know, the guy that needs to be, you know, given the shot not there so it's like yeah why not it, it it's a matchup that makes sense someone coming off of all the wins that khalil was his style and it looks you know it's going to make a good fight and it did no i agree i agree 100 percent. i thought it made a fantastic fight but i still <clears throat> i still have to say that this fight exceeded my expectation at my expectation i didn't think it'd go this long i thought for sure within two rounds someone was gonna get knocked out i thought it would be khalil would that would get knocked out Outside of like a flash catching him, you know, um, yeah. Alex throwing a lazy kick and him just exploding forward and catch him with a big shot, being able to try to wobble him and then try to finish him and get him out of there. That's how I thought if Khalil was to win, that's how it would look. There was moments where I was like, oh, wow, he hit him. Oh, God, he got it. He, clean, he caught him clean, got him backing up. But it just wasn't enough. He was just slightly, even Rogan was saying, he was slightly outside of his range. He was just yeah. barely touching The whole time. It. You know, you know? How many times? How many times did Khalil throw combinations that? And, and I thought John Wood was right in what he was telling him. Look at, it's the third one that's going to touch him, and he's, it's good. It's good information from his coach saying, "Hey, I need you to throw more than a one two. You got to go after him with that three four, because yeah. he's getting out of range on those first two. And it was good information, and it was happening all the time. You know, every now and then, you know, Khalil touched him, but he was having a hard time with the, the size. Well, I've said it before though, too, is that you don't realize that you need to force yourself sometimes to throw the three because the, the one and the two, the guy is so good that he's good at evaluating space. He's good at keeping that distance. So if you're just throwing the one and two and the one and two doesn't land, you have to commit to throwing the three and sometimes the four because that's that little extra that covers the distance because that fighter is used to just stepping just outside of your range. And then you throw the one and the two, and then maybe they want to counter Maybe they don't. So you could be walking into it. That's where the danger lies. Sure. But if you're the shorter fighter and the one that needs to get that disc, cover that distance, he needed to commit to the three and the four. And when he did, he was having some success. Not a lot of success, but still yeah, he was not. having a lot more than he was in just throwing the one and the two. But I'm going to go back to round. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go back to it. I feel like the, that fight right there saved the card. There was okay. a couple other fights that were on the card that were good, but that fight saved the card. There was that, and I've said I said this on Twitter too. I go, look, if we get a knockout, people are not going to care about what happened earlier in the night. It's, it's that's always common. that way. The, the, look, when the main event is actually a competitive and good fight, and has a finish, it really doesn't matter what happened with the rest of the main card, even the preliminary card. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. And so yeah. I you think- can you can have a great preliminary fights, you can have great you know main card fights, and if the main event absolutely tanks, the card sucked. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the way people true. look at it. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, they, they're like, oh, man, the whole car was great. The main event, they walk out of there going, ah, oh, it was okay. I, 
Let's go get a drink, you know? Let's drink away our sorrows. <clears throat> I mean, I just looked on Twitter and everyone was pissed. Well, I can't believe I paid 80 bucks for this garbage. And I was like, man, there was still some good fights. Yeah. Uh, but I thought um, Alex should be able to turn around real quick. He'll probably fight the winner um, of the Ankalaya fight. <clears throat> I can't think of anybody else left for him really to fight inside that weight class. Inside the weight class. Yeah, I mean, he, he's talking about going back down to 85. He may try to do that, I think. No, uh, he, he, if Strickland said, loses, he goes down. If you listened after, fight, thank you. Go ahead. Post fight. Go guys. ahead, KG. He said he uh, wants to leave that division open to his training partner, Sean Strickland. And Who I just said, if Sean shot. Strickland loses, he will go down. He might, because I don't think I don't think they're going to give him another shot after that for a little bit. So I think Alex would go down, wipe Drickus out of the way. Probably vacate the title, let him fight for a vacant one again. <laughs> Just go back up to 205. This no reason to go back to 185. World. This is all my fantasy world. No reason for him to go to 185. I want to see uh, Khalil Roundtree fight Jamal Hill now. I want to see that <laughs> fight go back again. That's a good fight. Have they not fought before? They no. were scheduled, but then a That's couple, right. couple negative uh, tests or positive uh, tests. Positive tests? Well, yeah, Khalil, Khalil had to. Khalil tested positive through a supplement mm. that you know they test. They went and bought that supplement, tested it, and yes, it had exactly what he tested for. Mm. So it's yeah, you know, th- th- that's one of those ones you look and you go, "What do you expect out of the athlete?" You know what? I had heard John that when they when they do that, they they buy <clears throat> two hundred samples. I don't know about from. 200. I heard they buy two hundred samples from different locations. <clears throat> and then, then what they do is they they sample each one, and if like a certain percentage of them come back with it, and it is what they they say that yes, it's been tested positive. Yeah. Bottom line is, it's fucking trash that companies do that shit. Oh man, it's exactly. <clears throat> I mean, it's a, as a you know, I know the UFC gives out a list of supplements to the fighters as far as hey. These are the ones that we would recommend based upon their quality and this and that, you know, and even those sometimes Hmm. do the pop. So yeah, it's not, it's not, not the fighter's fault. And I hate, I hate the fact that fighters get tainted by that because that's not fair. You know, they're not trying to do anything uh, to gain an advantage, an unfair advantage. They're trying to do what they think is best for them to get through training and, have supplementation and stuff and then that happens it's bullshit what i what i hate about that whole situation is when they still suspend them for six months oh yeah well that was usada usada always did that and it was it was almost like a well we have to prove that we're right but you weren't exactly that's that's what drives yeah but you were dirty (laughs) fucking ridiculous yeah Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can of sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play. But stay hydrated and stay salty. All right, let's go on to the the first championship fight that took place. The UFC Women's Bantamweight Championship. We had Raquel Pennington defending her title for the first time against former champion Juliana Pena. Both of them coming from the Ultimate Fighter show at the same time where Juliana was the winner. And in this one, Juliana's the winner again, I guess. But it was a very close fight. (laughs) You guess? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not too sure she won. You know, I'm okay. It's not. It wasn't a robbery. It was a boring fight. Let's just be honest. But uh, Raquel just again 
in my opinion, she lets fights get away from her with, I, I did like her jab. I thought she was throwing the, she threw that jab well, and but she didn't follow it up a lot of times. And it's like, you're just letting the, the rounds go by. Yeah. The whole, the, to... Everything came down to the first round. You know, yep. it was a close first round. Second round was Pena's. Third round was Pena's. Fourth round was Pennington's. And fifth round was Pennington's. No, and they need to, <clears throat> you guys need to go back and listen to um, my critique on Raquel Pennington last week. Yeah. And yeah. What I said was she has a habit of just not letting her hands go. Because when she does let her hands go, it makes the fighters respect her. And yeah. they just realize, well, she's got power. She can hurt me. She just doesn't do it enough. It's like she's conserving energy. Like she's like she wants to take home like extra. Like I still feel good after the fight. No, no, no. You have to leave it all out there. You don't want to feel good after the fight. You, you want, want to feel, feel like fucking they have to scrape fucking floor when I'm done. That's it. That's and it. just it's not Gave there everything for I have. Yeah, it's not there for her. I don't understand why. And finally, I think it was the third round. Her coach goes, Hey, what the fuck did we come here for? Like right. you like you have to let it go. You gotta you gotta pull the trigger. And she and did. So, and she did. And she won those rounds. And she did. Yep. I, I would lean mm-hmm. more towards that she won the fight myself. Yeah. But like I but see, now, a lot of that is because, I mean, you don't remember the first round after you've watched, you know, the, all mm-hmm. of them. And you see her in the end winning, you know, Juliana's having problems as far as she's tired. Yeah. She's, t- she's giving, you know, she's throwing shots and landing at times, but she's getting the worst of it. Yeah. But it, that's why that first round counts the same as the last round. Well, I want to say this, though. With Juliana Pena, she's known for what? Her conditioning, her submission, her grappling, her intensity, yep. right? Yep. yep. This is a classic situation where fighters that are not used to fighting the style that which she fought tonight. She doesn't normally fight like that. She nope. fought very conservative. Now, it might have been the altitude. Maybe that's why she tried not to fight at a very fast pace. She was concerned about the altitude. But the bottom line is when you don't fight the way you normally fight, it's like when you don't run the pace you normally run at. Like if I, I, the pace I, I even if it's slower, yes, if, even if it's slower, you get more fatigued. It's like, I my body just moves at a certain pace. I feel comfortable here. Okay. When I can't keep that pace anymore. Okay. I'll slow down a little bit. If I have, you know, basically my body will slow down for me. She has established herself to fight at a certain pace. And once that pace gets going, they get into like their groove, like that runner's high. It's that fighter's high. I'm cool in this position. I'm cool at this pace to fight you at this pace. She was not comfortable in this pace. It was a very slow pace. She's not built to fight this slow pace. The way that we saw her beat um, Amanda Nunes, the way we've seen her beat other fighters is just that aggressiveness, push forward, try and grind you out, try and get in your your grill and throw punches, get the takedowns. That's the way that she needs to fight because that's the, that's when we see the best performances from her. And tonight was not that. That definitely was not that. Because I mean, like oh. her, even her own corners, like get in her face. Don't let her. Don't move backwards. Push her now. Push her around, because then, then it makes Raquel even more hesitant to throw strikes, and it makes it easier for you to press her to the fence, control the the distance, get to the takedowns, and then she's gun shy. She, she let her get back into that fight in the third round. There was no reason for it. Yeah, I agree. None. I agree. But we have a new champion, two time now, and her. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. We had Mario <laughs> Batista taking on Jose Aldo. This is one of those ones. It was the fight. It was frustrating. It was frustrating. And I give nothing, you know, but praise to Batista. He went out there trying to do what he had to do to win the fight. Mm-hmm. That's that's following a game plan. That's a smart fighter. I take nothing from him. It was just by pushing Aldo up against the cage and basically making it a control factor instead of a fight. Yeah. It made it a boring fight. But uh, I, I'll give it to him. He's got cardio for days. He's, you know, we said he's tough as hell. You know, this was, you know, no doubt the biggest uh, fight of his career, the, the best competition. And he went out and he, he executed the game plan that his team, <laughs> the, the lab, came up with. It was the right, you know, game plan to win that fight. And that's what they did. So. I can't blame him, but it yeah. was boring. I had it going for Jose Aldo. I'm not mad that it went to Batista. It was a very yeah. close fight. I just think that the way that the results came through was because, oh, you pressed me to the fence, but you didn't do anything. It just it gets kind of in this weird funkiness like, okay, I guess it's just ring control then, right? 
I mean, but then I also look at it too. <clears throat> That's where Jose wanted to be. He's like, I need to get my breath. I need to catch my breath. I need to relax here for a second, get ready to circle up. He could have got off the fence any moment he wanted. Yeah. He just yeah, in this he, position. He's comfortable he was, there. He was comfortable. He's, he was getting his air, and he missed a lot. I will give he him did. that. He missed a lot. But when he did and land, he, it had the most effect. Oh, no doubt about it. He had the look, he was absolutely the faster fighter. And you looked at his hand speed comparative to Batista's. He was the faster fighter in it. But he was throwing so hard that I think he did tax himself to the point he had to take those breaks on the cage to keep himself going in the fight. I just wish I had an answer to why he doesn't kick. I don't know. He started to and then just stopped. <clears throat> yeah, he kicked the first round. Yeah. Probably the first like stopped. three, three, four minutes of the first round. And after that, he stopped. Yeah. I was like, oh. I mean, if I had takedown defense like that, I'd kick all the fucking time. I would just be like, ah, ah. Like, <clears throat> I mean, he was, he, you know, he gives me flashbacks of, right? And there's takedown defense is BJ Penn. Yeah. Because BJ could hop around on one foot well, all over the damn cage. Yeah. It was just in, so impressive when BJ was his flexibility, his dexterity, his, his ability to just balance. I mean, and deliver hard shots too from, from those positions. BJ would clinch your head in that tie plumb. And just uppercut you, and it was so nasty. He used to work on this thing in the gym where you'd hold a kick shield, and you know you'd grab his leg, and he would pull you in the tie in the Muay Thai plum, and he would just knee you right in the gut, <clears throat> and it dropped a couple guys that were holding the pad for him. <laughs> he was just like, because he was just so aggressive with his hips. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, it's a rough one. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, but overall, though, I thought. Jose looked good, but he also looked his age, you know? And as the, as you get older, those second, third rounds, they're going to be more difficult. I did give the fight to Jose Aldo, but I'm not mad that Batista won. It is what it no. is. You know, this is like this kind of the same way with the, the Pena and Pennington fight. It's too close. It's too close. Yeah, and it wasn't super action-packed where someone's getting hit with more shots and bigger shots to where, hey, it is what it is. Nothing you can That's do. It. Don't 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 complain about it. If you if you're on the losing end, you had the ability to do more. You decided not to. So, mm. Roman Delice taking on Kevin Holland. <coughs> this is one that surprised me because they had Delice being the underdog mm. in this fight by quite a bit. I was really surprised by that. I yeah. Thought, you know, uh, I mean, his grappling is outstanding, and he ended up hurting. You know, just based upon being heavy with his hips and as Kevin's trying to roll through it, he pops his rib. I don't know if he broke the rib, popped the cartilage out, but when, when that happens, you know what that's like. Yeah. I know what that's like. It sucks. And uh, his coach pulled the pin on him after, you know, the break in the round. If you're not if you're not going to give your, the coach the, hey, I, I, I want to fight, then he's going to – that was the right call for him to do. I don't know if Connor was on the booger sugar or something tonight, whatever, having a couple of proper 12s, but he was, he was very vocal on Twitter tonight. Really? The guy didn't, even give, it, the guy didn't even give it a go. Da, da, da. He, was talking trish, he was talking trash to Batista also. Batista did something in the post-fight interview saying, you know what, he can shut up and fuck off. I love that. <laughs> I was, he, he didn't have much to say outside of that. He's like, yeah, he can shut up and F off. Man. That was good. But in terms of this, um, <clears throat> you know, he just uh, was very vocal in terms of Kevin Holland didn't give it a go. Should have went back out there in the round and uh, tried. If you couldn't, then go ahead and have your corner throw the, the towel in. But I think the corner knew. Corner should know their fighter. They know that he couldn't continue. So, you know, <clears throat> I fought Healy with two broken ribs in my sternum. And Bob looked at me and goes, he's like, you want to quit? And I'm like, nah. He's like, all right, then shut up. I don't do want to hear about it. Like, here, Josh, do you want to <clears throat> quit? <laughs> It just makes That's, you good. It's like, yeah. You're like you son of a bitch. It's all, you know, psycho like it's all psychological, it man. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it is what it is. But, all right, uh, so Ro Deli Delizzi sorry, looked what? good, John. Delizzi looked he did. good. He did exactly what he should have done. Take the fight to the ground and just beat him down with good ground and pound. He's got, he's got a good ground game. He's got good top pressure. He's strong as hell. So I figured that Holland was going to have at least a tough time moving him around. And setting up any kind of submission. Holland's never been that guy that, you know, he talks so much during the fight. You just, you know, 
hey, stop talking and start going after the submission. But I love Kevin. Uh, I want to. I want to see him. Uh, you know, come back and be healthy and uh, get another go. But Delice did exactly what he was supposed to do in that fight. John, can you answer this for me? I don't understand how fighters can get to this level and not know how to escape mount. Now, I'm going to say that this tonight was because he, he had a broken rib or he had a fra- uh, torn a rib or something. Yeah. He possible. looked lost down there. Yeah. And I, we, I think there was a, another fight last week that we were talking about the same thing. There was a fighter last week. They got stuck yeah. in mount. Yeah. And they were like just kind of turning away, trying to hit you from the bottom, from the ben side. Mount. Who? Ben oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Say the knee against uh, Moicano. I'm like, how, how do you guys not know at this level? How to get out of try to get back is a little bit different because figure four, all that stuff. But in the mount position, they don't really lock their legs, you know. And if they do, like it's you're able to wiggle out a little bit. I, I just don't understand. You got to take that moment in time, no matter what, and say, I'm, I'm going to accept a shot to <sighs> put my hands in the right place on the hips to, to wiggle my way through. Yeah, but it's it's a it's an absolute certainty, it's very difficult for someone to hold on to that position. If you do things the right way. Especially if you're sweaty. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You know? But anyways. <laughs> a great performance by Delite. Kevin Holland, um, you know, he'll up quickly. And uh, I'm sure we'll see him back in there before now. He, he's someone who likes to stay active. So we'll see him again here shortly. But, but I, not, I gotta get, it's hard to shrimp with broken ribs. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, but he's, so. John, he's not, like, he's he's not doing well. He had the, the loss of Chamayev, loss of Stephen Thompson. Then yeah. he beat Ponson Ebo and beat Kiesa. Then he lost to Madalena and Page. Then he beats, uh, I can't even say the guy's name, uh, Mikhail Oleszczyk. And then he loses to Delice. So he wins one, loses two, wins three, loses one. He just can't seem to get his stride. Now with broken ribs, he'll be out for at least 10 weeks. Well, to sit there and stride, you, he needs to pick a damn division and stay with it. And yeah. It should be the welterweight division. It absolutely should be. Yeah. He's got to win over Joaquin Buckley, correct? Yep. Yeah, he knocked him yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, just, just keep your ass down at 170, man. Make the no. weight and stay there. I don't, there. You shouldn't be at 185. When, no. <clears throat> Joaquin Buckley's having success because he finally realized I'm too small for that division at 185. And you know what? If I'm going to try to take this serious, I just got to just keep my weight under control. And I'll be a fucking barber at one, 170, which he is. That? You know, and he's just building confidence every single time he fights. His performance tonight was fantastic. And we'll get into that in a second, but let's go ahead and next fight. Kayla Harrison taking on Caitlin Vieira. This is one of those, uh, you know, you you actually texted me something as far as, well, well, with that performance, she shouldn't be expecting a title fight. I'm like, oh, yeah, she will get the title fight. <laughs> You yeah, but then I watched yeah. the main event and, or the co-main event. I'm like, yeah, with that performance, you shouldn't have the title either. So yeah, <laughs> it's well, that's exactly it. Yeah, you, know, you look and you go, was it a was it a great fight for Kayla? No, but it was not bad. And there was things she did that were really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know how someone thinks you you lose a round based upon one elbow that doesn't knock you down, doesn't do anything. It puts a bump on your head. Well. Okay, but that doesn't lose you the round. Uh, Vieira just was too concerned with being taken down to let her hands go. When she got up against the cage, she did land a couple of good elbows, especially in the second round. But uh, other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of output from her. And when they hit the ground, dude, it was like watching a you know a skilled yeah you know ground fighter against someone that basically looked like they hadn't been there before she just did not have any answers to stop anything mm. as far as passing or movement or by kayla mm-hmm. um, yeah. right now in in my opinion with the ufc's bantamweight division which used to be you know the flagship for the women yeah. it is no longer the flagship and if you're going to say hey there's going to be one person that's going to hopefully save that Right now, it looks like Kayla Harrison because I'm being honest. You can say what you want about you know the title fight and Raquel and Juliana and them. No one cares. No one cares, dude. They care. You know, Kayla. Obviously, this fight you it would have been better. If she got the stoppage. I'm just being mouth. honest. <laughs> I mean, take a look. 
who's the person that is the, is the star of that division now? Yeah. I couldn't tell you, John. I mean, there's no one there. <clears throat> That's it. I mean, I, honestly, you would probably like to see Valentina maybe go up. She, she's not going to go up. She just got her title back. I get what you're saying, yeah. but like to have something against, you know, I don't know. I, there's there's nothing there for anyone. You understand what I'm saying? Like there's there's no, no I other. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, there's no other fighters there. <clears throat> I I mean, you've got, you know, the only other person is, look, let's be honest, Dumont is tough. Norma Dumont is tough, but she's not a star. No, she's not someone that is going to, you know, take that division and run with it. Okay. You can take a look and look at the people that are in there. Most of the, most of the talent is older and leaving. You know, I guess you could say Misha Tate is still there. She's not going to do anything. She just started another yeah. podcast, John. So I don't think she's okay. <clears throat> she's gonna be focused on that one. That's not I'm, fight driven. It's more, you know, health talk and stuff. So I mean, I you know. got Yana Santos. Mm. You know, good fighter, but yeah. definitely not gonna run away from anything. I mean, as, as a well, she's got know, a ways to thing. go too. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. so no, I get it. I mean, I, I'm just saying that you could see somebody possibly go up. That's the only thing I can think of. So when I'm looking at that division as well, uh, Farrow can maybe go up. That would pretty much be it. <laughs> that would pretty Again, much be it. It used to be the flagship, and now yeah. flagship no. is down in either the straw weight or uh, flyweight. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why is it that when Juliana Pena got the mic, she continues to try to call out Amanda Nunes. The dumbest thing ever. Dude, I mean, the UFC actually put up a picture of Kayla Harrison in the back. Yeah. You know, and Juliana is calling out a retired fighter. The hell? What are you doing? There's this you're, old, there's an old saying, ju- right? I'm trying to lob you a fucking softball. Your exactly. job is to hit it out of the fucking park. Yeah. When I lob you the softball, it's because I want you to put the bat on it and put it over the fence. I want you to sell something. Yeah. And what did you sell? A fight, a fight that that's happen. not going to happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I looked yeah. at that. I was like, well, you just blew that one, man. I mean, when we were working for Bellator, I used to hate when got when the fighters would be like, yeah, so-and-so from the UFC, if you want to come do this. I'm like, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> You're wasting your mic time on this bullshit. Yeah. And You're wasting though, everyone's time. And even though I was like up at the desk going, you know what? If that fight ever was to happen, I'd love to see it. I, I had to say that, you know, because I'm at the fucking desk, and I'm, but I'm in my mind yeah. going, you wasted your mic time to call out a fighter that will never fucking fight you ever, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so it used to drive me crazy that fighters would do that. I'm like, Dana White doesn't give a shit. The UFC fighters don't give a shit. No. This, you shouldn't give a shit. You should just move on. Like, move on. Just keep winning your fights. Do the best you can. That's it. It used to drive me crazy. Yeah. Anyway. That's what you. That's what you do when you're the one interviewing. Just move on. It's like, yeah, I can't make this right. I can't. Now. <laughs> you were the one interviewing. Like, I, can't I can't make it. it right. I can't. Do. It's like, the, all the, right, we're done. The, you said it though. They pulled up a picture of Kayla Harrison, but Joe like teed it up. Like, here you go. This oh, is yeah. What, yeah, and psh, he and said she's like, Kayla oh, Harrison, no. you know, right? yeah, and Kayla's like. like uh, what the fuck oh, yeah. are you doing? What are you She's doing? running. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. It so, doesn't but, matter. It, like it, it really doesn't matter. You know who's going to get the next shot. Yeah. It's going to be Kayla. So Juliana's going to have to deal with Kayla and we'll see what happens. Uh, I think the next, this, the next best fight on the card outside of the main event was this next fight though, with Steven yeah, Thompson absolutely. and Joaquin Buckley. Absolutely. Uh, this was, this was actually a really good, well, there was, there was a couple of the good ones, but Joaquin Buckley and Stephen Thompson put on a great show. I mm-hmm. thought uh, Stephen looked really good. He did. For a lot of it. But that shot that, I mean, Buckley was up in the air. He mm-hmm. jumped forward to throw that right hand. It landed. It landed clean. And you could tell that Stephen was done. You know, didn't know where he was at. And uh, it was a good stoppage by Mike Beltran to get in there and uh, stop the fight. But Oh, yeah. Buckley's on fire right now. Look, he's he's doing he's doing good things as far as the way he's fighting. You know, he's taking on better and better talent. You know, obviously Stephen is not 
who he once was, but he's still a hell of a fighter. Absolutely. So, so he got a he got a good win against a uh, big name, which is great for Buckley. And you know everything he's doing, you know even even you know on his on his social media, he's funny as hell, and he he puts stuff out there, you know that's that's hysterical and. Uh, no, he got, got you looking. Fight. He got you looking, huh? He got you looking with the golf, <laughs> with the golf media, thing, man. With the golf yeah, thing. <laughs> with the golf thing, yeah. I so loved it. Great. What are you looking so at them great. cakes for, man? <laughs> oh man, it was so funny. We're gonna have George put that video up. It's in the news section that we put up there, George. Yeah. Add that clip in there. Yeah, it was funny. Got to look and I was like, oh wait, oh she's a golfer. Cool. And yeah. then all of a sudden Joaquin Buckley, <laughs> boom. I'm like, oh, you yeah. did me dirty, you fucking scumbag. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, anyways, good, I that's thought it was good. a great fight. I thought, um, I thought Stephen Thompson looked great. And like I said last week, and we both said last week was, no matter what, you cannot bring someone in to replicate what Stephen Thompson does. So yeah, he very, literally, very Joaquin difficult. Buckley walked back to the corner after the first round, going, "Shit, I can't hit this guy." And I'm hitting him, but like he's just outside of range, or I'm lunging in, I'm leaving myself out yeah. of position. He he went back to the corner, going. How do, what do I do to solve this problem? And luckily for him, that Stephen Thompson is 42 years old or 41 years old. Because then he started to slow down. Slow down. His movement wasn't as good. He's leaving himself in that position a little bit too long. And Joaquin Buckley is that fighter now where he wasn't before. He's He can go hard and throw the amount of strikes that he, he can with the power that he throws it with for a full three yeah. rounds. Whereas yeah. before, he wasn't that person. He would start to slow down by round one and a half or halfway three quarters of the way through the second round. He wasn't the same fighter in the third round. He now is that you could tell this is his profession. He is, he can go hard and aggressive for his style of fighting for a hard three rounds. He yeah. did that tonight. I thought I he fought a great fight. He did. Against someone that is so difficult to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, but it was it was a very good performance by him. Uh, we had uh, Lucindo. Taking on Marina Rodriguez. This is one of the, I don't know, it's Isamine, Isamine Lucindo. But uh, really good performance by her, I thought. Yeah. I thought she, you know, she took on someone who's known for her stand up, did the right thing, put her on the ground, you know. Well, just, she got in trouble in the first round. She got rocked in the first <laughs> round. Well, then she got in trouble with the referee by sticking her chin in the fighter's eye. That's eye-socket, what I wanted to ask is, you about. Go ahead. It, so that's illegal. Yes. How come I can put my elbow in your eye socket, but I can't put my chin? You're not. You can't. You can't put your elbow in my eye socket. You can throw oh. an elbow, and if it lands in there, that it's, lands it's in my eye socket. It's legal. Got it. But you can't take your elbow and stick it in my eye socket and grind it. You can't do that. That's okay, because I, I, for some reason, I have it in my mind: Rico Rodriguez versus Randy Couture. He elbowed him. Broke his orbital, elbow right, him. but it was yeah, right broke in the his eye. Orbital. Yeah. Okay, I just That's assumed legal. it could be the same thing. No. Like if I just put my elbow in there, is that considered an orifice? Then is that what the problem is? No, is it's it not considered, considered like what? How the, the fight that did it is? I told I actually told the UFC before. I said, "Hey, what about you know taking the chin and sticking it and grinding it into the eye socket?" Yeah, that's good. Okay, right? Because we said no eye poking or anything like that. I said, okay. So then they had Mark Kerr fight Dan Bobish. I don't know if you remember Dan. I remember Bobish. Dan Bobish. <laughs> Muscle mm-hmm. out Dan Bobish. Mark Kerr takes him down, gets on top of him, and takes his chin and sticks it. And Dan Bobish ah, taps out, right? And, and he's sitting there you know, with his eye like this. <laughs> so I stopped the fight, right? And they go, oh, we can't have that. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> so that became, you, know, you cannot take. That's yeah. eye gouging the same as sticking your finger. Dan Bobish, Dan he was Bobish. a super heavyweight. Fight. Oh yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, he was. He yeah, was we didn't have we didn't have we didn't yeah. have a a weight you know weight limit at the time. Yeah, he was. Man, he had muscles on muscles. Yep. <laughs> he reminded. <laughs> I mean, if you, if there was a poster child for a, a Lyle Alzado, uh, <laughs> 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 it would have been him. Like yep. I, I don't I don't know, man. <clears throat> yes, you do. Yeah, and so I did everybody, everybody else. else. See, I don't know. Th- this is one of those ones. I'm always. T- I always tell Josh. And Josh will tell you. That, hey, yeah. don't say that someone's taking something if you cannot 100 say I know he is or verify it. 
<laughs> right? So I'm just telling you right now, Dan Bobish was taking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was, right. I he mean, could I back remember, then. I remember seeing him around. I think at like some King of the Cages bout kit a long time ago. Oh yeah, Holy shit. He was. Oh big. yeah, he was oh, just yeah. like. I mean, I wonder. <laughs> do you remember Roger Neff? Oh yeah, I, I was just gonna bring him up. Are you kidding? Yeah. Roger Neff with the United States <clears throat> singlet. Yeah, he would wear the red, white, and blue singlet. <laughs> yeah, Roger wrestled at North Idaho College with me and Trevor Prangley and oh, uh, did Mike he? Whitehead. Yeah, he was. He was, put he was together. the heavyweight. Yeah, he was put pretty, yeah, he was put together. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I used to rent a room from him and his wife. Go ahead wife. and say that he didn't take anything either. <laughs> I got nothing to say, John. Yeah. That guy, <laughs> I rented a room. I rented a room. But this is this this guy. He re, you know who he reminded me of? Rich Crunkleton, Cleet. Yeah. Rich Crunkleton. What to do is he would he would. Uh, Rich Crunkleton was the size of Roger Neff's yeah, leg. leg. <laughs> his third leg. <laughs> But, I don't know about that part, but <clears throat> Roger was this kind of guy, like how Rich Crunkleton was. Rich would be in the bathroom, and all of a sudden, you know, you'd get a, "Hey, come here, man! I gotta show you something real quick." So Bob, you know, he'd be like, "Hey, Bob, come here! I gotta show you something real quick." And he, like, you'd come around the corner into the bathroom as the doors open, and he'd just have a fucking wadded up piece of toilet paper with shit all over. Be like, "See, like this," and have like corn and peanuts and shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like what the f-? but uh roger neff would you know he had to look in the mirror to wipe his ass so he would call you in as he'd have his foot up on the because he couldn't reach so he had he had to like kind of like kind of like pat real quick you know like you know you kind of like swipes yeah like swipes you know you try to scratch your back and you're just you can't get it so Dude. you know <laughs> when it when it comes to the point you're so big that you can't wipe your own ass, John, it's, t- it's time to start fucking. He, that he shit. put his foot up on the toilet, and but he would call you into the bathroom. Hey, Josh, come here. Hey, we had another buddy uh, who would live with us too, Ivan. Hey, Ivan, get in here, man. Get in here. And we, I'd be in the kitchen, whatever. And he'd be, Ivan, get in here, man. I need your help with something. Ivan, come around the corner. His fucking legs up on the toilet ass looking in the mirror right when you walk in and he's trying to swipe to wipe his ass and i would come around you sick fuck and just start yelling get out don't, don't call me in there for that shit i was like oh my god he should have called diddy no <laughs> he should have called diddy oh man they might have been good friends anyway yeah, oh it was wild dude when i was yeah there's some wild times there's a lot of stories to tell holy shit but that was hilarious. I mean, when you're so big, like you said, John, you can't wipe your ass. I get it's it. Like, time, I have a hard time, time scratching my back. No, I'm, I'm so I can't big. scratch my back. Flexibility is not my Okay, thing. gone. And my shoulders are fucking toast. I can't yeah. do that. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but that's what... <laughs> I don't know how we got off on that tangent. But <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Anyways, Alex Hernandez and Austin Hubbard. Good fight. I, I actually thought this was a good fight. Yes. I thought both guys really fought hard. I actually... I, 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 you can so take a look. One of those and, fights. And it was. It was one of them fights. I thought Alex Hernandez did some good things. I thought Austin Hubbard did some good things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought Austin actually was landing the better shots overall. I thought so too. The heavier shots, but <clears throat> in the end, he didn't get it. But uh, you know, you could take a look at Alex Hernandez's face by the end of it. You go, you took a lot of shots, man. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I it, think when you ran, when I ran into the problem, if I was judging that fight, <clears throat> is Austin Hubbard's shots. They landed like in twos and threes, but they didn't yeah. have the effect. It had the effect on his face, yep. but it didn't have the effect of like making him move backwards. He kind of stayed in the pocket a little bit. Whereas Austin Hubbard, every time he got hit, he would move away. And it just looked a little bit more dramatic. Yeah. So the refs, when they're or the refs, judges, when they're judging it, that shot looked like it landed harder because when you got hit, it kind of knocked you off balance or it made you move backwards or made you circle out. It had more yeah. of a, an effect on how the fight played out. Whereas even though Austin Hubbard's looks like strikes were landing more like twos and threes and they were, they just, they were all happening in fluid motions, not like loading up. He was doing it very clean yeah. and it was just very, very nice to see. It just didn't have the effect to make Alex Hernandez scoot back or move around or, and when it did, <clears throat> I don't think it was enough. So the judges leaned one way. I mean, it was such a close fight though. I had Dude, Austin Hubbard winning the fight. One judge had Austin Hubbard winning 30 27. Hmm. I had yeah. I had Austin winning the fight. So not 29 28, but <laughs> eh, it is what it is. 
Uh, we had Cesar Almeida taking on Ihor Poteria. This was a uh, ant fight, but I'll tell you what. The referee absolutely destroyed this fight. Mm. It was bad. Pretoria got eye poked probably five to six times in this thing. And I I, I know the referee. I've, he's been around forever. He's been refing in Utah for over 20 years. This is what happens when I try to tell people, see, you, you'll take someone that they believe in, that, oh, he's done it for so long, and you put him in these positions. And this is where it's it's everything. You can take a look at look at when he's checking the fighters and he starts doing this big swooping motion over the tape mm-hmm. of the glove and he, he makes it dramatic. And you go, dude, you, I don't know if you realize this isn't about you. No one gives a shit about you. He fucking broke him off of clinches. The guy gets into a clinch on the fence, 10 seconds. And he separates him, takes him apart. And you look and you go, it's all about you, isn't it? <clears throat> and he, again, this is where I talk about as as a referee, you're never going to make a bad fight good, but you can definitely make a good fight bad. Well, congratulations, Dave Stelliestet, you made a fight bad. Man, we call him by names and shit. I don't now. give a shit. <clears throat> you absolutely <laughs> just shit the bed. No, it was horrible. <clears throat> you you did something completely outside of what the rules of the sport are and what mm. it's intended for. Why? No, it sucks. You let a guy get eye poked how many times and you told him just fight, fight. Oh, wow. Because you can't see it. What are you in there for? You're supposed to see these things. And then <clears throat> you're looking at the wrong guy. The guy that's continually getting fouled, you're not even looking at. It's like, okay, whatever. Stop, quit, <clears throat> retire. Okay. The sport has passed you by and. You're not doing your job, so you're no good for anybody. Just telling you. You can hate me now. <clears throat> there's a there's a new young uh, ref coming up. His name is Paul Bonatello. He can slide right into that spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give him my boy I've, some love. I've seen Paul. <laughs> good. Yeah, good. That, that whole young part, nah, that's a lie. Come on. Don't be that's taking things to my boy. You that's guys are about lie, the same man. age, actually. That's what I said. That whole young <laughs> part, that's a lie. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, another great uh, performance, though, tonight was Ryan Spann over Ovis St. Preux. He looked yeah, good. He I did. Mean, I, I, get, I get it. I, yeah. But yeah. he looked good. He did. He did He did exactly what he was supposed to do. He went out there. He threw hard shots. He created a problem, created a situation, slapped on the guillotine, ended the fight. That's what you're supposed to do. Congratulations. That was a, a very nice performance. Then we had Tisha Pennington. Taking on Carla Esparza in her last fight, you gotta, I gotta go with that. As far as Carla has been around for a long time, has had a, a very nice career. This is one person that actually, the very first straw weight champion in the UFC, and then actually came back after losing her title to Joanna, came back and won it again against the same person in Rose, and we know that Rose is a hell of a fighter. So, you know, I, I started refing. Uh, the cookie monster long ago, long ago. And, you wrapped uh, her she, match when she won the title in Invicta. I did. Because <clears throat> I saw you in the background when they put the belt on her. I did. And she's, she was always a good person, good for the sport, good, you know, as far as uh, how she represented herself. The one thing that I will say about Carla that always scared the hell out of me, she always looked scared to death walking out for the fight or standing in the cage before the fight. She looked like she was being led to her execution. I never understood it, but she did it all the time, so it was her thing, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I like how the UFC commentators just cr- kind of try to make something of a you know stoic look. It's stoic. No, no, it's scared to death look. But you know, yeah, she you know, but she's been fighting since back in 2010. So that's a long career. Congratulations on a, a very long, healthy career where you had a lot of success. And the best to you and whatever you do in the future, you are good for the sport. Thank you for what you did. A true professional. Very, very nice to all of her fans. Very um, always happy, always smiling. Every time I saw her out and about at events, super nice, sweet person. Uh, always pleasure yeah. to be around. Yep. <clears throat> um, I enjoy... A lot of people didn't enjoy watching her fight, but I come from a wrestling background, so I enjoyed what she was able to do. 
with the limited skills that she had on the feet. Yeah. She really made it work. Uh, even tonight, you know, that first round wasn't going her way. You know, she made some adjustments and changes and then, you know, started to be able to get the takedowns and control. <clears throat> I thought she won the fight. This is one another one of those fights, though, that yeah. it could have went That's either it. way. And it went the way that it, it was going to go um, based on the judging and how they were doing it tonight. But <clears throat> I had Carla winning this fight. Tisha, though, nothing to be upset about. You know, I thought she fought well. Very hard to deal with somebody when they, you know that their whole goal was to take you down. You know, what I did like, True. though, with Carla, at the very end, I thought she stole the round because she landed that vicious elbow. It looked like Tisha the was elbows right out. at the end. Yeah. And it looked like Both. Tisha was almost out. Like, she looked – I couldn't tell – if she almost was out or if the round ended and she just kind of relaxed because her body looked like it went limp yeah, for a second nice. with that elbow. She relaxed, but the, the elbow landed and it, and it landed really well. Yeah. And it was, uh, hey, you could take a look. Even in the stand-up, Carla was landing. Yeah. Tisha was landing. Yeah, if you want to sit there and say, well, who had the, you know, the better shots? Neither one had great shots overall. Not a lot of power on them or anything like that. So it was more volume. But... I have no problem, like you, you know, you said in the, the start of the show. It's hey, when you have that kind of fight and you leave it into the judges' hands, they're gonna go one way or the yeah. other. And they went with Tisha on it. Congratulations to Tisha for getting the win. Can I can I toot the UFC's horn for a second here? No. <sighs> I'm not being a hater, John. <laughs> I mean, go guys ahead. in the comment section, tear I was John just a shill. Now I'm a hater. <laughs> um. You know, they started doing the whole uh, feature pieces on them when they kind of knew you were going to retire. Like they did it with Robbie Lawler. I love it with that. her. I yep. think it's a fantastic thing. Yeah. Absolutely I agree. fantastic. Let them get, yeah. let them be honored inside there on their Good last on the UFC, especially in front of the crowd job. and everything. <clears throat> yeah. I thought it was a great yeah. job and I'm happy that, I'm happy they did it for her. Yeah. You know, um, sometimes you don't know what they're going to do. You know, I think, you know, the UFC. Despite what people may think, they do have favorites, you know, and uh, you may get the love. You may not get the love. And uh, I'm glad that she got the love and the respect she deserves. She's she's a sweet, sweet person. Happy for her family. She has a new little baby, you know, and plus, you know, husband. Which was dressed as a cookie monster. <clears throat> yes, it was that. awesome. It was so cool. And the, the baby kept trying to grab the microphone from yeah. Joe. Yeah, I thought was it was a, great. Yeah. I love seeing Joe get emotional. Uh, you know, he was almost about to start crying right there when he was saying goodbye to her. There's just certain fighters, and I think for him, he Joe's been around the sport for so long, but he's seen a lot of these fighters come and go. Sure. And having the opportunity right now to go back and see some of the stuff in history, I bet you Joe, when watching it, was like, shit, man, I was there at that fight. I'm seeing yeah. him meet my, himself on the screen. The memories flash back for him just as much as it does for every other fan watching the feature. Not just for them, but all, mainly for her. Yeah. It's It's an emotional moment for retirement. <clears throat> man, I thought she deserved to be honored that way, and um, good for her, man. I, I hope I wish her nothing but the best in her next chapter because it is better. It is it is a better chapter. It's once you kind of try to figure out what you're doing, it's a better chapter. It's fun. It's just it's a different chapter, I should say. It's just different. Yeah, it's, it's completely different. It's like yeah. when people say, "Hey, you know, what do you like better, California or Texas?" I'm like, they're just different. They're just different. Like they they don't have the they're not the same at all. No. <clears throat> I posted a video today um, of me at Lowe's because I had to go there to pick some stuff up because, you know, I'm working now, John. I'm working. So, anyways. <laughs> You're working at Lowe's? <laughs> I'm working at the house. I'm going to pick up You're some stuff. You're working at the house? I'm at the house. Okay. <clears throat> and um, I, I pull up and I see, like, the first five spots of every row at Lowe's is veteran parking, veteran parking, yeah. uh, you know, <clears throat> uh Purple Heart parking, um, family members who have lost someone in the military parking, uh, baby on board parking, or That's you know, yeah, you, like, know. All, <clears throat> you know, uh, expecting mother parking. It's all things to do with like respect and and like elderly, like the senior citizen parking. It's got all these things. I'm like, you don't ever see that shit. Uh, I don't see it any other. I never saw that in California. You'll no. see every once in a while. You'll see expecting mother, you know, handicap. You'll see for sure. But. Yeah. I'm not taking a dig. It's just different. You know, maybe, just different. <clears throat> maybe no, just a little bit. That's not me. Uh, Come well, on. I, the last fight on the card, I didn't get to see it. Was the Court McGee and Tim Means? Did you see? I it? saw it. I did. I watched <laughs> it, and uh, it was um, 
first round, the court court actually looked really good. Uh, he he was moving well. Tim Tim's just slowing down. He's forty some forty one years old or so. And uh, dirty bird. But the I, dude, I refereed Tim all the way back in King of the Cage days, and you know he was always dude. He was a tough son of a bitch. That dude could throw elbows, and he was mean. You know, I always said, you know, well, Tim means because he's mean, man, and he yeah. is. He, he's got a mean side to him, but he got he got caught uh, basically, you know, in a choke, pulled his head out, got his head to the side, and it was more of a neck crank that uh, Court McGee got him in, and you know, I don't blame him. It looked painful, and Court's a strong guy, so it was time to get out of there, and you know, good for Court McGee. He he won in his hometown since he lives in Salt Lake City, Utah. So nice, nice win for him. Mm. Uh, there was must have been something said afterwards. Um, uh, who was it? <clears throat> who said something? Someone said that he is the Court McGee's the nicest guy in the sport, and I think it was was it Mike Brown? Hmm. Gosh, I can't remember who it was. Anyways, and he and Court McGee got, he got emotional about it, <clears throat> which was kind of nice to see. You know, just talking about the, it's uh, fun. Court is very similar. You know, Matt Brown. Matt Court Brown, kinda, sorry, Matt Brown, not Mike okay. Brown. Matt Brown said there you go. Said that they kind of <laughs> have a, a similar background. Uh, yeah. Both had an addiction problem, and uh, MMA and martial arts kind of brought them out of those things, and they gave them something to you know, you know, take over as an addiction for them, and it, it worked out well. It was it was one time, yeah, it was really. <laughs> I, I actually. I wasn't I wasn't there for it, but uh, Jeremy Horn fought Court because Jeremy had moved to Utah, and uh, Court was the big thing in Utah. He was young, and he had talked a lot of stuff, and uh, Jeremy ends up choking him, and but then he gets up and he spits at him. Oh. And I was like, Jeremy, what are you doing, man? You know, he's oh, John. You don't always. I said, doesn't matter, dude. You don't. You don't yeah. want to do that, right? You can't do that. And he says, yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, but it's a uh, court's always court has had a very good career, you know, won the ultimate fighter. That was a great thing. You know, he's part of the, uh, you take a look and I, I don't want to I wanted to say this and I, I didn't bring it up. You know, I just did a John Hackleman called me real fast. And I jumped on his podcast. And, you know, John Hackleman is one of the, yeah, he's one of the pioneers of having a team and, you know, taking care of guys. And, and he was so good for Chuck and Chuck was so good for him. You know, John Hackleman being Chuck Liddell's trainer. Mm-hmm. And then the second one that came into that realm really was Glover Teixeira because Glover became, you know, a training partner for Chuck Mm-hmm. and was, you know, helping Chuck even with a ground game as far as, you know, Chuck could wrestle, but he didn't really have submissions. And Glover was a submission guy. And then, you know, Chuck was helping Glover with the stand-up along with John. And and then you take a look at, you know, the just the lineage of how things, you know, go about. Now you've got Alex Pereira, you know, Poetan with, who's his trainer? It's Glover Teixeira. Well, who taught Glover Teixeira how to be a trainer? Well, it's John Hackleman. And then... Court McGee was the guy, next guy that really came in. And uh, I want to say, uh, what was it, Ramsey Neeson? Or he he was on the old fighter. He kind of was in the pit for a while. But Court McGee was the next one that was really one of one of John Hackleman's guys. And Court really had a great career overall. Yeah. He's, it's continuing on, I'm sure, but uh, that's a good win for him. Absolutely. All right, hey guys, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. But before we move on, I want to <clears throat> let everyone rem- remind everyone this episode is brought to you by BetUS, also brought to you by Element. Stay salty, my friends. Check the link down below in the description. You guys can hit that link. That'll take you guys over to uh, to, to Element, and you guys can pick up. Sorry, it's 2 or 3 in the morning here, so we're working Sorry. on this. And uh, yes, <laughs> and so check out their, their mixtures that they have available, the little packets that they have. And here's the box right here. Can get a box of this right here, the element. This is the raspberry flavor. My favorite. And I like this, and <clears throat> it's really good during the during the um, hot days. So I'd use that, and I've actually been putting the Tapa Chico, which is the the um, seltzer water. Yeah, seltzer water. Man, it's so good, John. Gotta be careful; <laughs> it'll fizz up on you. 
but uh, it's a fantastic uh, recovery um, drink for you guys to mix in. You can also buy it in the cans that are also um, already carbonated. Those are also very good. Those are good on the go for myself. So you don't have to carry around a bottle of water and a packet. You can just grab that can on the go out of the house. Quick and easy, man. So check them out. Use our link down in the descriptions. They'll send you a bonus package with every purchase. But before we move on, look, all these things, all of our sponsors are actually going to bring you guys this because this is the best part, I think, of the whole show. This is Dale Cormier, who was uh, attached <clears throat> to like a, a stem exactly. unit or something around his belly yeah. so they could reenact what it's like yeah. to have cramps on your period. But I want to let you know what a former UFC, ch uh, UFC champion sounds like when Jesus. having his period. Oh, uh, whoops, whoops. <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. This is a I don't give a fuck about what stop. 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 This is every, this is every month. Just do your job. Come Just on. do your job. Florida Sanko, it happens every month. Stop. Go fast, go harder. Right now. No, stop. Ah! <laughs> that shit sucks. Oh, my God. Stop. 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 <laughs> love it that was great yeah. that was great oh man but i thought that was great i wanted to finish the show with a laugh because you know it's early in the morning here and i want to let you guys know we're thinking I, of you guys I, yeah i don't know if i told you you remember phil miller philip miller philip miller yeah do you remember who you, you know who he is yes okay philip miller fought in the ufc philip miller fought and philip miller quit fighting I want to say his record was 16 and 0 when he when he decided to retire. Mm -hmm. He had never been beat. Good wrestler. He comes on LAPD, <clears throat> and I end up I'm at the academy, and so he he's one of the recruits going through the, the whole program. And one of the things that you know I kind of instituted at the time was, hey, you know we have these things, the tasers and stuff, and you're not going to go out and get certified if you're not if, by not getting shocked by it. You have to know what it does. Mm -hmm how it feels for you to go and, you know, understand, if, you know, if you're going to use it against someone, you know, why it wouldn't work and all these different things. So one of the, Phil Miller knew that, you know, oh, we're, it's taser day and you know, we're going to do this stuff. And, and he comes up to me, he says, he goes, he says, uh, he goes, how long is the, uh, you know, you know, he goes, Officer McCarthy, how, how long, how long is the, the thing for? I said, well, if you know, if you do, don't tell me to stop it, I said, uh, you know, if you tell me, you know, stop, I'll stop it. I said, but if you don't, it's five seconds. And he goes, is that, is that how long you've gone? I go, no, there's a civilian model that goes for 10. I've done that one. And he goes, then I, I want 10 seconds. <laughs> hey, <laughs> and I go, Phil, no, you can't have 10 seconds, five seconds. If, if you, if you ride it for that long, you're good. So, you know, we take and we hook it up on him and, you know, and I'll put it, one down low on a leg and so they get the full blast oh lovely it's, it, it's better it's it, you know the spread of the darts if you shoot you know is only about foot and a half to two foot in this one you know you're talking about a good four to five foot spread because you're putting them on them so i you know i just tell you know i said you know you know put it on him tell him all right are you ready right and he goes yeah you know, and he's standing there and he and i hit him with it the first when it first hits you it blast you. it's like because everything tenses up right and he, he gets hit with it and he goes oh i like it <laughs> <laughs> so oh, dan geez. cormier would never be able to do that no. <laughs> because it's a lot worse than that stem unit but daniel was one of those guys like if you try to like he would always mess with everybody in the gym but you yeah. mess back with him he like stop, stop, man, stop, stop. Come stop. on, come oh, on. You're hurting yeah. me. You're hurting me. Like stop, <laughs> stop. He would like all of a sudden get real serious. And it's very uh, difficult because he's the one always fucking around with you. That's but when why you, you turn the tables him. on him and you try to turn in and play with him, he's like, stop, stop. Seriously, man, stop. You're, you're, come on, come on. You're really gonna hurt me. You're gonna hurt me. Like he was he would almost get very serious about it. I was like, man, you're you're a no fun to be around sometimes. <laughs> no fun. No yeah. fun. He actually is a lot of fun because he's got a great person. Oh, he is. But. He is. Yeah. God, what there was a story I was gonna tell you. Shit, I forgot. Anyways. Right. Well, I want to say this. The world works in miraculous ways because here on my farm, we lost a dog. 
uh, yesterday. Which one? Uh, Max, who was one of the fastest damn dogs here. He would chase me around when I would be on a side by side. This dog, I clocked him at 40 miles an hour, right? He would just run, man. He, that dog could run forever. I would, my whole property is, you know, if you mapped it out, you do all the trails, it's about three and a half miles. That dog, I would take it, make it run the whole thing, and he would just like be ready to go again. Well, he ended up uh, getting hurt and then losing basically its back leg, and this everything fell apart before him. So we had to put him down yesterday. And so we had to put him down. But what comes up today? A baby donkey. Uh -oh. <laughs> so that's not Max. That's now Maxine uh -oh. or Maxie. No. That's Maxi now. So we got a new one. She she came out yet just early this morning. So you lose one, you pick up another. The world works in mysterious ways. I already named that donkey though. I named him Big Donkey John. No, That's what I named it. <laughs> Big Donkey it's John. <laughs> it's a girl, man. John, there was a the video sweetheart. that I posted a long time ago. I'm sorry for the loss on the dog though, by the way. That's okay. <clears throat> I want to give you a little feedback on this today. Story today, I walk into my house after my son's soccer game, and we've been gone for about four hours. And um, <clears throat> our dog last night, we bought this new dog food. So I wake up this morning around 4.30 because I got to take my son to his game. He's got to be there by 7.15. It's about 40, 30 minutes, 35 minutes away. So I wake up around 4.15, and all of a sudden I'm like, what is, something doesn't feel right in the house. My dog's kind of like walking around. He's normally like laying next to the bed. <clears throat> well, he had an upset stomach last night, so there's fucking shit all oh, over the house. I've bad. got white carpets kind of through my house, like rugs. So I'm cleaning fucking shit all, and I'm like, from, this from this four sucks. fifteen until four fifteen until <laughs> like six fifteen, basically oh, yeah. trying to get it all before we had to leave. Anyways, <clears throat> get it all clean, you know, pre not pressure wash, but um. You know, vacuum. Same, we, we, pressure no, watching yeah. your well, they're rugs. They're rugs. So you, mm. no, but I had a steam cleaner, like a yeah, yeah, vacuum steam cleaner, but we have already. Anyways, so we're good. We're like, you know what? Screw it. We take the dog. We take our dog with us. He's a lab. He goes, he goes everywhere with us a lot of the time. So we take him with us. You know, he's not feeling well. Get him in the car. We go to the game, come back. We drop him off because he's got, my son's got two football games and, a, and my daughter's got a soccer game. So we're gone for about three hours, three and a half hours. We come back, shits again all over the rugs, different rugs, different spots. I'm like, fuck. So I spend more time cleaning this fucking thing. And then I, and my buddy, I tell my buddy this because he's like, hey, you need to come over and watch the fights tonight. I'm like, nah, no, nah, I, I got I to gotta take care of some shit. Literally take care of some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, all that could go through my mind is, Thank God I don't have a Roomba. That's all that could go through my mind. I had a buddy who had a Roomba and his dog took a shit. Oh, had the he rugs, spread it all over. And it spread it all over his carpets, all over his house. Plus, the Roombas cost about 900 bucks. Yeah. I had to throw it away. Expensive. It's got a bunch of little bristles underneath it. I had to throw it away. <clears throat> that was the way that I spent my whole day today. It was four early in the morning cleaning shit, <sighs> watching, watching games all day in 92 degree weather, coming home, cleaning shit. And then that's what I had to go to Lowe's for, pick up some new carpet cleaner and all the other shit to clean the house. Jeez, man. <clears throat> but to get back to your, your taser story, I posted a video on my social media a while back. It got taken down because they said it was inappropriate. There's a tubby guy. I think it's in LA. Tubby guy running from the cops. And all you see is butt naked. He's got long hair. It's flowing in the wind when he's running. And the cop tasers him from behind. A car is videoing it. And he just goes stiff and literally just fucking flat. Flat pans right on his face. Yep. <laughs> it started cracking up. Hysterical. That was okay. one of my favorite videos, man. It was awesome. It was awesome. All right, guys. Hey, we're gonna wrap this up. I want to thank you guys for joining us. And uh, look, I know the voice is a little raspy. Bear with us. Hopefully, it'll be gone by uh, Tuesday when we do our live show on Tuesday nights. Just a reminder: our shows are live on Tuesday nights, so don't miss it. It's at 9.30 Eastern Time. 9.30 Eastern Time is our live shows. So check us out there. Join to be a member. Super chats are available. We have a $4.99 membership and a $1.99 membership. I want to thank you guys so much for continuing to support us. And we're trying to do the best we can. We got some more interviews dropping. If those of you guys that haven't seen the interviews from last week, I know you guys are talking about the Luke Thomas and the Brendan Schaub interview. 
The full interview will drop on Monday, Tuesday this week. Plus, we have a couple more that we're filming this week that will drop the following week. But the rest of the show will drop on Monday, Tuesday this week. The Shab and the Luke Thomas. We just pulled some parts from those that were talking about the pay-per-view. So it wasn't after the fact. So I want to thank you guys for continuing to support us. And go to WayneAndMerch.com. Pick up some of our apparel that's available there. And thank you guys for continuing to support us. Last but not least, thank you, BetUS, for supporting us and taking care of us and sponsoring our podcast, as well as Element. Hit the link in the descriptions down below. Pick up some of the merch down there and available uh, product there. Get a bonus package when you use our link in the descriptions. And last but not least, we are now, we are back with partnering with OnlyFans. So make sure you subscribe to us over there. It is free. So subscribe to us over there at the OnlyFans and John, take us away. <laughs> Excuse me. For everyone out there, there's a lot of people having some hard times on the east side in North Carolina, East Tennessee, Georgia. Do something good for someone, take care of someone, and we will see you.